Leanne Tomlin, you met on our vaccine special, uh, and she's brought along her dad, uh, whom you won't have met yet, Mark. Uh, and as Leanne told us, she lost her stepmom, Lucy Tabera, and Mark is Lucy's grieving widower. Mark has a young son who is growing up without a mother. And this shouldn't be necessary, but it is. For the benefit of Jim Waterson and all the other media big shots who deny the reality here, here is Lucy's death certificate. Do you see that? Lucy died early on in the vaccine rollout at the Queen's Medical Centre in Nottingham, and the cause of death certified by the Deputy Registrar is there at the bottom, adverse reaction to COVID-19 vaccination. This is real, but the pom-pom girls of the UK media invested in a fairy tale, a fairy tale that could never possibly be true. Here's telly doctor Sarah Kayat enthralling Philip Schofield on ITV. Well, what's really excellent is, uh, and it's a statistic that I think should be shouted from the rooftops, is that um, after 12 days from the first vaccination of the AstraZeneca vaccine, you are 100% effective against hospitalisation and death. So, you know, those are the statistics we need to be hearing. Why, and yes, haven't, we, why you know, haven't we heard that yeah. before? <laughs> because it's not true. It's not true and it could never be true. Leanne, how do you feel when you see uh, something like that Philip Schofield clip there? It makes me really angry. It just takes me back to how they try to coerce us into getting these vaccines. Mm. It makes me really upset that we fell for it, to be honest. It mm. just, yeah, I just wish we could go back to the beginning and not take part in any of this at all. Well, that's actually a very good point, because if they had been honest about what were known, as various U.S. officials at least have said, what were known to be the drawbacks of these vaccines, um, then then quite possibly uh, Lucy might be might still be with us because mm -hmm. she would have con she 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 was in her 40s, I think, yeah. Leanne said well, last time. Yeah, so she actually so. had no need to take this. Thing. No. And if we'd have had more information and more information had been out there, then we would have made a different decision. And, but we, we believed and we jumped on board mm -hmm. with the vaccination because we were sold that the vaccination was the answer. Mm. There was no risk with the vaccination. Just have the vaccination and everything get back to normal. You're sneered at now by these fellows at The Guardian and elsewhere as anti-vaxxers. Oh, oh, but that. you're actually not anti-vaxxers. Because you, because you took the vax, That's you what? you were just like him, mm. and it's just the uh, crapshoot that that says uh, your beloved Lucy died, and that guy at the Guardian didn't. Just want recognition that that's what happened, and that is what happened. Mm. So the denial does deniers, their deniers that the vaccine can do damage and can kill people. How's how's your young boy doing? Because Orson, I mean, Orson's a lovely boy, and he he was really really loved by his mum very much. Yeah. And I mean, it's a, a success story for Lucy. Yeah. How well he's doing, yeah. but the fact doesn't change. He's going to have to grow up without his mother, and that's not fair, and that's not right, and that's. Well, normally, and certainly during these COVID years, Leanne, we've, we've told ourselves we're a great compassionate society, we're all in it together. Um, when you actually post anything mm. about Lucy and your loss on Twitter, it gets labelled as misinformation and fake news. Yeah, mm. I got an email saying that they'd have to remove the post and that if I carried on posting anything like that, then I would be banned from Twitter completely. They said that it was misleading and that it was a lie and that I was putting off people having the vaccine. <laughs> well, do you, do you sometimes feel you're living in some kind of North Korean media environment? Yeah, I feel like I'm living in a nightmare. I just wish I could go back to 2019 before COVID, mm. before any mm. of this. Mm. I just, yeah, it's horrible. You, you've learned a lot more about these vaccines bec because of what happened mm. to, to Lucy. Yeah, so. Are you surprised that everyone else, such as this parliamentary undersecretary for vaccines, is still peddling the, the, 
late 2020 fairy tale mm. that it's uh, a miracle it's a miracle drug it's 100 percent effective and uh, everybody should just be lining up for it i think still. they should just be honest with the facts and the figures mm. like, if we know what's going on then it's an informed choice mm. there you go i mean but they're offering my son a vaccination are you kidding me? No, my son's been offered a vaccination. So even though your son's mother mm. died of this vaccine... vaccine... My son has been offered a vaccination, a COVID vaccination. And how old is he? Six. There's absolutely no scientific reason, no medical reason, oh, no. for a six-year-old boy oh, to get one of these oh, things. No. Don't... don't, don't he's, not, he's don't, not going to be having a vaccination. No, no. I, I, uh, no. I hope not. No. We, we've, we were talking about the numbers on this, Leanne, and basically it's very hard to find any, particularly now where, you know, 93% of the country is vaccinated and uh, the vaccinated account for 93% of all deaths. <laughs> so it's not, it's, it, they're flops. Mm. They, 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 you can, if you, if you massage the numbers sufficiently, you can find some benefit if you're up over 70, 75, mm. 80. Not, not a lot. lot. Mm. But, but uh, why are we still then trying to stick it into perfectly healthy 50, 40, 30, 12, six-year-olds yeah. like your brother? Exactly. They okay. were offering the vaccine actually outside my um, outside Lucy's work at the leisure centre. Two children advertising it as be a vax hero. There was pictures of superheroes on the wall outside. Mm. And yeah, they're offering it to children all the time outside of McDonald's in our, in our, in our area. And mm. um, yeah, they're doing it all the time. They're giving it to everybody everywhere. Festivals, it's another place that it's, it's given out to people. What is the reaction of your friends when you uh, talk about Lucy? Do people just not... I mean, it, it's... It, everyone got behind it, from the Queen mm. down. Mm. And is it just that no one can admit that this thing has actually done terrible damage? Yeah, I just don't think people want to admit it, either because they've had it and they feel duped into having it. Mm -hmm. They didn't really actually need it. I've got plenty of friends that have been vaccinated, they've caught COVID and they've still been, they've been poorer, but they're still here. Yeah. That's it. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What, what was the worst part of this for you, Mark? Leanne was telling us that, that, that basically uh, it was the time when you couldn't get into hospital, you couldn't get to see Lucy, that it's, it's not as if when, when what happened to her happened to her, it's not as if she could even die surrounded by loved ones in, no, in the conventional way. When Lucy went to hospital and we were in contact with phone calls and messages mm. and they just got less and less as she progressively got worse and worse mm. but we weren't aware of what was going on we didn't get to visit her so we didn't get to share what she was going through mm. and obviously find out what happened to Lucy afterwards mm. we were just kept out of it very worst thing about losing Lucy or one of the things about losing Lucy is, is how much she was loved by everybody and she was a very popular person so it's not just myself there's a lot of people that are missing lucy 